We're live. All right, are we live? Yes. Do we have anybody uh, checking in? Not yet. Not yet? All right. I'm gonna put that music just a little bit loud. Uh, sorry, lower. Okay. Okay, I got five people. All right, we're just gonna wait just a little bit longer until a few more people just start to connect. And then we'll get started. Let me know guys if you can hear me good. If the uh, picture quality is good, give me a thumbs up. We got thumbs, we got people saying hi. Yeah. Brian Sir, Crystal Coleman. Oh, Crystal's in the house. <laughs> oh, Crystal. Okay. All right. We're up to 45. 45. All right, good. So, all right, let's get started. All right, guys. So, um, first of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody for um, checking in and uh, joining the live feed here on Davenus Education Facebook Live. So, before I actually get started, I just want to say thank you to Davenus um, for letting me do this live for them and connecting with the whole Davenus family around the world. So, that is an honor. Um, and basically, guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning in and um, having a little bit of fun uh, for the next hour, um, hour and a bit. Anyway, so I want this to be interactive. Um, if you have any questions, um, please ask. You can ask me whatever you want, um, just not too personal. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so this whole hour is, just a, is basically an experience, okay? And I just wanted to give you sort of an insight into... You know, what I do and how I see things and um, how I create and you know kind of the why because um, you know it's always it's always you always see us on stage and you kind of get to see the end product so I uh, wanted to kind of do today where it's kind of like a quick little um, I guess transformation if you will with a, a hair art piece all right and I just want to take you kind of like from the beginning and I'm going to take you through like the steps through it uh, until we kind of come up with that last piece. So we'll do step by step um, and I'll kind of show you how it's done and you know kind of like my thought process and, and the why. So that's I mean that's kind of like what today is. So I want to do something a little bit different. Obviously I don't want to do a haircut um, or a color or, or a, a style. Um, I just like I had said previous uh, in the community uh, in the community chat with anyone this morning that I just wanted to kind of do something maybe just kind of step outside the box a little bit and you know kind of maybe make make people see things from a different perspective and that's really what today is. So um, I was probably like a lot of the times what I do when I'm creating stuff or when I want to start you know getting into that mindset what I do is I research. So I'll start researching, and that research can be anything. You know, it could be from like you know, researching on the internet. Um, you know, and that's kind of like that. That has such a big wide uh, uh, spectrum of you know being able to sort of inform yourself. But also, I like to do something that's a little bit more kind of like hands-on. So a lot of the times, what I'll do is I'll go to like you know arts and craft stores, um, you know, Joanne's, Michaels. That's what we have here. And um, that's how I kind of uh, get it started, you know. Or we go down to, let's say, downtown LA, and we um, start going to like, you know, uh, like sort of like this little fashion district where you just, you know, just start looking and you just want to be inspired by all these different types of little things. So that's how I kind of start the process. But anyways, before we even get into the process, I'm just going to introduce myself. My, my, uh, I'm Michael Polsonelli. I am an artist for Dabness, and um, I'm part of an amazing community. So, yeah, so let's get started. Um, so about, uh, about two, three years ago, I kind of stumbled upon this, this type of paper. And my kids have a huge art supply closet. They love art, they love making stuff and whatever. And I, and I ran across this, this paper. And this paper is made of foam. And I'm sure some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, but I'm just gonna, and it does hold you here for a second. So this is basically how it starts. All right, so it comes in basically a package. 
and I'm just going to pull this out. So this is just basically a piece of foam paper. Um, and the objective today is to try and take something like this that's very kind of one-dimensional, you know, when it's laying flat on a table, and to try and create something that uh, will resemble a piece of hair art and try to transform it into a three-dimensional thing, a three-dimensional shape. So, you know, before I kind of, you know, start understanding where it is that I want to go, I want to play with this a little bit before I actually start. And um, I try to figure out, you know, what, what I can do with this. Now, this, this paper, as I found out, as I started working with it, um, you can do a, a million things with it. So the great thing is, is that you have endless possibilities, and the bad thing is, is that you have endless possibilities. Because you can just, you know, it just blows your mind. You can just keep, you know, doing so many things as you're working with it. You guys all like, you guys all hear me okay? Everything's good? Yeah. Give me a thumbs up. Lots of thumbs, lots of hearts. All right, cool. Great. All right. So, here we have this foam paper. So, you can see some of the things that we're going to be using today. Um, so, obviously, we're going to be using an X-Acto knife, some scissors. i got an extra, you know, glue stick. I've got some um, hair tape, two-way hair tape. I've got some needle and thread. And I'm not going to be using needle and thread for this particular one, but um, I have a little surprise after I finish this one. Um, I'm going to show you another uh, piece, another hair art that is a little bit more, I said, shall we say, intricate. So, uh, yeah, we got some painter's tape or masking tape, whatever you call it, or it depends on wherever you are. And here is like this hair tape that I really love. Um, this is my favorite hair tape, and it's double sided, and um, it's really, really strong. So, I like the strength in this, and they use this for like, you know, movies and um, wigs and hair pieces and all that kind of stuff so it sticks on really really well I don't know exactly what it's called all I know is that it looks like this and I always refer to it as this so that's basically where we're, where we're at with that okay so once again um, you know I was fidgeting around and I stumbled across this paper and I thought it was amazing so when I sometimes when I when I find something when I found this paper you know, I'll go and buy stuff and then I'll bring it home and it just intrigues me. I might not use it right then and there, but um, the fact that it kind of, you know, kind of provoked my thought process, that to me tells my intuition or tells me that this is, this is a possibility of, of creating something with this. I don't know what it is at the time, but um, I'll buy it because it just intrigues me. And when I, you know, when I get home, I either have the time to kind of start playing with it, or in this case, I didn't have time to start playing with this paper because I had so many other projects going on at that point in time. My life was kind of crazy. And I kind of just shelved it, like I had said earlier. So since I've been home now for about seven weeks, um, I thought this is a great time to kind of pull this back out and see what we can do with this. So having said that, um, we will get started. So guys, ask me questions, please. Uh, if you have any questions, bring here behind the camera. She's helping me out. Today. There's already a couple. Anna asked, where do you buy the tape? Where do you buy the tape? I buy the tape um, at an actual, it's called uh, the hair shop. And it's in uh, It's in the valley. So it's in the San Fernando Valley. And I get it. It's basically, um, it's an amazing store where you can buy all kinds of wigs and um, um, hair wefts and all, all that. So they, they really specialize in that. So that's where I get this. So I get this in, uh, in the Valley in LA. So that's where I... I don't know if you can find this online, um, but it's a possibility. All right. Any, uh, somebody else ask a question? No, it was all relatively the same. Where do you no, buy your supplies same. and tape, etc.? Yeah. I, you know, guys, when, you, when you're kind of doing this kind of stuff, you really have to research. You really have to be like that person where... You keep just digging and digging and digging. And what happens is you get to a point where all of a sudden you start finding stuff. And I, you know, Amazon is my is my friend, obviously as well. And I just buy a ton of stuff because I'm a little bit of a pack rat when it comes to supplies and when it comes to you know materials. And because I love working with different mediums. So today, like I said, the medium today is the foam paper. So that's what we're gonna do today. And. 
that's how I kind of do it. All right. So it, it's a very kind. Of, I just want, it's a very organic process, guys. Sometimes when you're creating things, um, magic happens instantly, and then sometimes, most of the times, the magic you have to work at it. You have to really kind of break things apart and do it and throw it in the trash and then do it again and throw it in the trash and then all of a sudden you do something the light bulb goes off and you go, there it is. And then from there, once you get that sort of initial idea and understanding of where you want to go with something, that's when all the different sort of um, concepts and ideas start. Okay? So, I'm going to get started. I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a few things from each step because otherwise it will be kind of redundant and it will be repetitive and that's the thing about um, you know when you're, when you're creating hair pieces they are redundant they're very kind of repetitive so it's like you have to have this thing what I call is creative patience because it takes time to do you know you know all the steps to get through luckily this is a little bit quicker but some of the pieces that I've done have taken me and that's why this before on stage uh, in Iceland it takes me sometimes two months to create a piece depending on how intricate it it really is. But part of that process is making your mistakes, or not really mistakes, but you know, understanding um, kind of like the methodology. Because every time you do something different, every time you do something new, there's a different methodology, there's a different pattern, there's a different you know, mindset. It's, you know, a lot of the times when I'm doing something new, it's like I've never done it before, but I, I love that sort of uh, having those epiphanies, you know? I love that challenge of kind of understanding, ah, this is another way of doing something completely different that I've never done before. All right, so um, we're just going to move here to step one. Now, the actual foam paper, the dimensions are, are roughly about um, seven wide, seven inches wide, I don't know what that is in centimeters, and about 12 inches uh, in length, okay? So now I measured this piece to fit relatively on the mannequin today that we're going to be shooting on, or sorry, or just um, basically assembling this piece on. So what I've done here is I have a cutting board, I have my masking tape or painter's tape so that I can really sort of fasten it so that it doesn't move. This paper, as I was learning, it moves, okay, so it tends to kind of have its own sort of life, so when you're, when you're cutting something, it'll kind of just sort of press or move away from each other. So you gotta kind of learn how to play with it. And that's, that's part of the fun when you're, when you're creating something new or something different, okay? So, because it has a little bit of tactility to it, because it, it is foam, um, this is the kind of, you know, ruler that I'm using, if you will, um, because it's got a wide surface, and I can actually, you know, press on here so that the fabric underneath it doesn't move, so it really helps me kind of, um, you know, helps me cut this piece exactly the way I want it, not the way I want to cut it. So now you can see I I've, I've already cut some some pieces here. Now I they're not exactly the same because I don't want them to be perfect. I want there to be a little bit of you know that organic feel in. Uh, in the size of each sort of like strand. So my initial thought was that I wanted this to look like somewhat like hair, but obviously in a, with a different medium. So that was what I was going with. So I just started cutting things freehand. I like to do things very organic at times. Sometimes I'm very structured and deliberate, and then sometimes I like to just make things happen organically because I love, love, love the element of surprise. So now I've got my, my X-Acto knife and I'm pressing really hard on this ruler so that way it does not move. So I'm just kind of doing this all by eye, right? This is all by eye, this is all by feel. I can, I can see it. Now if you see, I put that tape on the top there and, I, and it's for a reason. So this length between the edge and where I'm starting is deliberate. Okay, so that I would say that's probably about a centimeter or maybe like, you know, half, half an inch or almost just close to half an inch because I like that spacing um, when I actually join two pieces together and I'll, you know, you'll understand that a little bit later as I'm working through here. 
So once again, I use this edge of my blue tape as my guide and I'm cutting my way through. Now, as I'm using the X-Acto knife, obviously the blade has to be pretty sharp, but also as I'm cutting, I'm pressing down on this ruler and at the same time, I'm actually pushing as I'm cutting up against the ruler as well because if you don't, sometimes what happens is your blade will just kind of come off and then you end up cutting a piece off and then that's it. You've got to start all over again. How do I know? Because it's happened to me. And that's part of the process, all about the trial and error. Okay, so. I'm just working this in here. And I, I'm, you know, I'm gonna use this whole piece, so I'm gonna cut this whole piece so that I can use every single strand. And you guys will understand, because I know right now you're kind of going, well, what's he doing? Where's this going? So you'll, uh, you'll see as, uh, as we move between step. And you know, this is a very simple idea. Um, I, think, I think the most beautiful things in life are very simplistic. You know, they're very, they're very minimal. Even though something looks minimal, doesn't mean that it's, you know, it's easy. I think the, the beauty about minimalism is the thought put behind it to make it look like it's effortless. And I think that that is, you know, one of the key elements in, in design, you know. Um, me as a, as, you know, as a, as a hairdresser, I'm like, I've always, I've always, uh, my motto is, you know, less is more. So that's my motto, and that's how I like to kind of work things. You know, things look intricate, but yet they look um, clean and simple. Um, I kind of shy away from things that are very big, uh, very uh, elaborate. Uh, you know, it, 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 that's just me. You know, there's a lot of beautiful things out there that are, much, that are very big and elaborate. Uh, elaborate. Um, I tend to kind of just like to work with... Uh, you know, compact volume, whatever that means to, you know, it's, it means different, something different to everybody. So Anna, if you're out there watching, I decided to wear shoes today. So, she's gonna kill me. I love you, Anna. Norm Wright has a question. Yeah, Norm. Hey, Norm, how are you, buddy? He says, does the idea for the collection or the concept for a new idea come first? So the idea or the concept? Chicken or the egg? Um, that, that's a great question. And I didn't really, you know, because this, this really isn't a collection here today, but I think I'm gonna turn it into a collection because I'm, I'm kind of like liking, you know, what's happening with this. But, um, no, you know, for me, no. You know, it, it's very organic for me. Uh, sometimes, you know, an idea of what the end result happens first in my head. Or sometimes it's just basically, you know, like today, this, this, this material, this medium inspired me. And um, I kind of just go with it. And what usually happens with my collections is um, I get all this sort of, you know, creative, all these creative juices flowing in my head. And what I want to do is I want to just get them out of me. Okay, I just want to get them out of me. And what usually happens is as I'm creating all these looks, the story kind of unfolds in front of me, if that makes any sense. Because everything starts to have um, a connection. All the looks start to have a connection. There's a rhythm uh, within uh, each of the looks that I'm creating. And sometimes, most of the times, that's how the story is told to me. It's, it's told to me by, you know, basically what I'm creating. So, like, you know, and, and, it, and it can be anywhere in between there, especially when, you know, creative people will tell you the same thing. It's just like sometimes, you know, I start at the end and I work towards the beginning. Sometimes I start in the beginning and I work towards the end. And sometimes I just, I'm in the middle and I either go left or right. So the process for me is very organic. And, you know, there is no right and there is no wrong. And I think that that's really important when, you know, people are trying to be creative or they're getting into that sort of, into that world of being creative. 
Norm, you know this because you're creative as hell. So, um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So guys, you can basically see what's happening. So I'm creating little kind of thick strands of foam hair. So that's what I'm doing right now, okay? So I'm just kind of cutting my last piece here. Everybody out there okay? Yeah, the, the camera is kind of malfunctioning on me. Oh, it is? The holder that we have, yeah. Uh -oh. Keeps taking its own well, maybe, direction. Maybe we need to take it off. I think I fixed it. Fixed if it does it again, I promise. Okay, I'll so take yeah, it guys, off. if something's not working out there, or if you can't see something, if you can't hear us, just tell, let us know. Okay. All right, uh, so I'm just taking this last piece off here. Now, when you're cutting this, I, I always, you know, I always see it. What happens is, it's impossible for it to be perfect. Okay, so this was the top, right here. Now you see that's a little skinnier. And as we work towards the bottom, it got a little fatter. All right, but that's fine. So what I usually do, if something doesn't work, I just leave that last piece and I actually omit it. I take it away. So that I work with all the rest of these. Okay, so now basically, um, I have all these strands of hair and we're going to work into the next step. So as I go into the next step, I thought, um, you know, you know, weaving and braiding and all that kind of stuff is, uh, it's beautiful. It's very, you know, it's very organic. It's, uh, depending on how you do it, you can make it look very traditional or very futuristic. Um, so I kind of think maybe I'm somewhere in between here, but um, I wanted to take, uh, you know, sort of tradition. I love traditional sort of techniques and um, sort of like refurbishing them or just like, you know, trying to create something sort of new to the eye, it's the hardest thing to do uh, when you create. I mean, trying to create something that hasn't been done before, it's damn nearly impossible today. But that's always the objective. And, and I'm always kind of like pushing myself to, to, to you know, basically I'm my own worst critic, my, I'm my own worst enemy, and my, you know, my team will tell you, you know? So, um, but yeah, I love kind of just trying to see if I can push myself to see if I can, I can maybe find a new way of, uh, of doing something. So I really believe that, you know, in order to move forward, you gotta, you gotta come from somewhere. You gotta, sometimes you have to revisit where you were because you can take a great thing that you did in the past and you can actually make that evolve because times change, your brain changes, the way you see things and everything changes. So you always get a brand new, fresh approach to something that's maybe been done before, but you can kind of reorganize it in a way where it looks, you know, fresh and new. I don't know if that makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense up there. All right, I'm just gonna have some water. It's like, uh, are we doing okay so far, guys? Everything good so far? Yes. All right. Um, Amanda says hi. Hi, Amanda. Amanda from Toronto. That's two. That's uh, two Canadians so far. Norman and Amanda from Toronto. There's a lot of Canadians. A lot of Canadians. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My my crazy Canucks. Okay, so now, Brent, if you come in, I don't know if you can come in close here, yeah. now, but okay, so here's that same thing, and here's the same idea. Okay, we just cut this right over here. So now, basically, all I've done is I've basically resituated horizontally so that I can actually weave. All right, so. All of a sudden, now you've just got these strands of hair and you, and you start to just weave it in on itself, in and out, and all of a sudden it starts to look completely different. And it's really, really simple, okay? It's really, really simple and it's really fast. All right, so I'm just gonna start weaving here. Now, I'm taking the one on the outside and I'm coming over top only because it's flatter on this side, so when I lay it against the head, it's gonna be really, really flat on the other side. Okay, so it's nice and flat here, right? So that's, you know, that's intentional. Because it, on this side, you've got the ridges. All right, so it, it doesn't lay as flat on the head. So all these little kind of things, you kind of realize 
when you're doing it because you, you can't really think about all these sort of variables uh, on your own. You know, all these, all these situations present themselves, you know, when you're doing it. So that's the thing about, you know, creating something, right? When you create something, you actually have to do it in order to understand what's going to work and what's not going to work, okay? There's a question here asking if this substance is porous or if you could color it. You can color this. You can definitely color this. I don't know, you know, I don't know how uh, even or, you know, it's going to look, but you can color this because it is somewhat porous. Because it is foam. So foam will definitely uh, absorb. Once I'm again, take it off of this. Is, is it going crazy? Yeah, it has a mind of its own. All right, let's take it off. Sorry, everyone. Well, it's alive. That's why they're lives. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, I'm just like weaving in and out, in and out. Uh, you can, you know, I've tried to put this like on a big needle and fish it through. Um, but it, for me, it doesn't work because, like I said, this foam does have a little bit of tactility to it. So what it does is it starts pulling all these little pieces of threads here, these, this foam here. Um, and it kind of changes the direction of the hair, so that's what you don't want to happen. So what I'm doing is, is I'm using one hand to kind of really keep this from moving too much so that I can get a really good visual of where I am. And as you can see, I'm actually pulling this one strand so that it is kind of straightening itself out here. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Um, so that's why I need sort of control with every strand because you really want to make sure that it stays even and it looks like it, there's some kind of symmetry to it. Now, do you know how many times I, I weave this? All right. And I mess it up a lot of times. I've had to kind of like go back and start over again. And it's like, oh. So sometimes that happens. And when you miss one, you've got to kind of go back, you know, find the one that you missed and start all over again. All right. Okay, so there you go. How easy is that? You know, it's really simple, but it's effective, I think, anyways. You know, something really simple. You know, it's, this is, once again, this is a very traditional kind of, you know, weaving in and out. You know, we've seen it lots of times, but what makes it different to me is the fact of how we're going to use this piece and the material that we're using it on. So I think that that, you know, makes it different. Really good response. They love how it's a simple concept. It's beautiful, it looks really cool. Yay, good. You know, guys, this is the hard thing about, you know, when you put yourself out there. And, you know, I'm a very open and honest person. Um, anybody that's taken my classes uh, knows that about me. I put myself out there to be ridiculed and criticized and all of the above. So, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes people create, well, anyways, I create only because I want to feed my soul. Um, it, it's important to me to kind of just be able to let out the ideas that I have in my head, whether they're good, bad, or, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, but that's just, that's just the way it works, okay? And you've got, to me, you've got to, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm doing here. Hold on. There we go. See? I'm a guy, you know? It's hard to, like... It's hard to multitask, walk and chew gum, you know. Um, but sometimes when you think, you know, you're creating something and you really love it, and then all of a sudden, you know, other people just don't like it. But that's, that's life, that's art, you know. You can't, you can't please everybody, but you gotta do it, um, you know, you gotta do what feeds your soul, and this feeds my soul. Um, I love cutting hair, I work in the salon, um, you know, I love designing hair, styling hair, all of the above. But this is, for me, one way to really kind of, you know, challenge myself to do something completely different. Gianni, again, wants to know what material the paper is. All right, guys, so just kind of like I was saying in the beginning, this is foam paper. Okay, this is paper made out of foam. 
And there's different, actually, you know what? There's different um, thicknesses to it. And this is two millimeters. So this is the thinnest one because I wanted it to be very pliable and flimsy so that I can manipulate, you know, this material. If it's too thick, then, you know, wrapping it around the head or trying to do stuff with it uh, really limits your, um, it really limits your creativity. It really limits what you can and cannot do with it. Ooh, thank God I caught it right there. Ooh. And they're saying, is your weave just an over under? It's all it is, it's just over and under. So simple. But once again, like I said, you know, it's very effective. So now you can see I'm just using, you know, clips just to kind of hold this intact. All right, so there you go. So now I've already measured exactly how much of this I want to do. So I know that there's seven strands. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is where I want to stop. All right, I want to stop because this is exactly how much space I need here on the top to mold around the head and for this to kind of just drop and hang, okay? So, just to kind of recap, guys, if people are joining us right now, um, the meeting today, or what we're doing today, is we're doing kind of like a little hair art class, okay? Um, very quick and easy. We're, going to, we're starting from the beginning, from what it looks like, one-dimensional, you know, it's very one-dimensional, flat on the table, um, piece of foam paper. Okay, and then we moved on to our first step, which was organically just, you know, using the same, you know, space without measuring and just cutting it freehand and just creating all these little sort of, what I want to say is like little strands of hair foam, shall we say, okay? So this was step one. So step two, we just finished and we were just basically weaving from the outside strand over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. So it's really simple. It's just an over and under weave, okay? Nothing crazy, but I think it's very beautiful and very clean, um, and it just, it, it gives it a different sort of feel. So we're going from one dimensional, now you're kind of starting to see a little bit more of a two dimensional kind of feel here, because you can see, all right, you can see the highs and lows um, that's happening here with the weave, yeah? Yes. You good? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So now we're going to move into step three, okay? So we're going to do step three. So step three, we're right over here. It's great. I don't even have to, I don't even have to walk. I'm just like, I'm just like sliding around here on my, on my chair. <laughs> All right, so what we've done now is we've got a little rinky-dinky little hot glue gun. Okay, I don't know where I got this. I don't know why I have this, but it worked perfectly. I have like the big, the big ones that are, um, you know, they're really powerful. But I needed something really tiny to kind of be able to fit inside these little spaces. So people that work with me know, like I said, I'm really meticulous about the tools that I use and the things that I use and, and um, you know, how they affect the work that I'm doing. So it's really important. So you are only as good as the tools that you have. So I know this looks kind of funny and silly. It's something that my kids can use, but you know what, it's effective because the spout is very, um, is very small and it's just, it's just perfect. So the next step is now. Amanda likes that it's pink. Oh yes, of course Amanda. <laughs> Amanda and her yellow, her second favorite color. Yeah, I, two favorite colors exactly so what I should have put was like maybe like a unicorn sticker on here with like Amanda's name on it yeah. and a cat somewhere and a cat somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> our, our little cat lady okay so uh, basically the next step I've already gone in and done quite a bit of like spot gluing already so as you can see um, these are already fastened okay they're just like little dabs of glue that you put on the perimeter so that way, what it does is that when you start to like wrap it around the head, obviously the head is rounded or oval. Um, and if you don't have that control, what will happen is all these little pieces of hair foam, okay, will start to just, you know, just jump away from the head shape. And that's not what you want. You want it to be, you want to have control. So how do I do that? So I know that this side, 
Okay, this side, the underside, is going to be the side that's going to be flush on the head. So I only have to worry about the strands. And guys, you know what? This is, I, I'm kind of like, you know, saving you all the sort of monotony of, uh, uh, you know, of the repetitiveness. Uh, and I've kind of figured this all out as, as, as I've gone and as I've done this. So as you can see, I have like, I don't know, back here. You know. Tons and tons and tons of stuff that I've done. And, you know, this is only some of it, you know. But, you know, you make so much material and you kind of really just see what works and what doesn't work. You know, and this is, the other great thing too is that this paper comes in different colors. Okay? So I wanted to use a very, a very just um, beautiful light gray because what it does is it, it transcends really nice on, on the mannequin. So that's the reason why I wanted to use gray. And it, for me, I like, to, I like things that kind of all sort of like attract and coexist and blend into each other that creates a, a beautiful overall kind of look. I don't like things that are kind of like, you know, there's, you know, black and all of a sudden you've got this big neon you know, pink things sticking on the head, so it, it just doesn't work for me. But anyway, so you can see all the different, you know, little things. Now this one, this one I cut a lot smaller, so you can see how much finer these are. Okay, these are a lot finer. These are really tiny. And it's hard to do. But, here's the thing. I went a little bit bigger with the strands, only because when the eye sees it, the eye can register a little bit better. And you can you can you can kind of you know you can make it out a little bit more. So everything is everything is done for a reason. You, you know everything has a, everything has a purpose, especially when you're shooting. Um, and anybody that does photography knows that what you see in real life and what you see behind the lens is two different things. So um, you gotta have you know kind of two different mindsets mindsets when you're working like that and when you're working um, doing live demonstrations on stage. That's a whole, you know, the hair has to look a certain way, uh, has a different feel, and has a different approach and different execution than when you're working in the salon or when you're photo, you know, when you're doing photo shoots. It kind of like, it, it's sort of three different, um, you've got to train the eye in three kind of different scenarios, if that makes any sense. Yeah, guys, any questions? All right. Um, one question. Okay. Can hair products damage the foam or stain it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because it is very, very porous. You know? Um, it will... This paper is... It is... It, it's strong, but it's still delicate at the same time. Okay? So, uh, you got to kind of be careful. And when I'm usually picking the foam pieces itself, sometimes they come and they're a little bit... Um, marked or they have like little lines on them or whatever so you want to make sure that whatever you pick uh, the piece of paper is relatively clean okay so you just saw what i did there so i just did a tiny 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 little dab of glue okay and here's the other thing too you know you want to be kind of very light-handed about this um, you always want to work very, very clean. You know, you always want to be very, very clean in the way you work because otherwise what happens is you'll see it. So when you're doing this kind of stuff, you want to try and be um, very subliminal, if you, you know, very, very clean. You don't want to be very heavy handed and, and using a lot of glue because then you, you really see it. Now what happens with the glue gun, as you can see, you get these little filaments Get these little spider things, all right? So what you want to do is every one that you do, you want to clean that up right away, okay? So you just clean that up right away. All right, let's see. This one here. I know I'm only gonna do a few of these so that you can, you get the idea. Crystal wants to know if any products are gonna be used today Not for today. This. Not today. Today is just basically your imagination and foam paper or whatever medium it is that you know you want to use to express yourself. Okay? So now I've gone in and I've already glued all the rest of these. 
So I want to just do a few of them because, like I said, you don't need to see me gluing over and over and over again. All right, so now what we want to do is we kind of just want to take this off. Actually, you can just leave that on. That's totally good. So this is excess, all right? We don't need this anymore, all right? So we're gonna take that off of there. I'm just gonna cut this off. I'm just gonna cut this away. Okay, so now it becomes this really nice clean piece. Take this off. And once again, you know, you know, you want to make sure that you're using tape or any material, um, anything on here that's not going to disrupt the fabric, right? Nothing that's going to, you know, damage what it is that you're working with. So that's really important. So now we take that off there. And I'm just gonna cut this off right here as well. Okay, so there's our piece. All right, so here's our piece. Looks pretty simple, doesn't it? Right? Now, what we do with it is kind of like, what makes it come to life? What brings it to life? Um, and once again, like I said, this is kind of a little bit more of a two-dimensional feel to it because you can see the ins and outs, so you can see the highs and lows with this. It's still kind of pretty flat, but we're going from one-dimensional to kind of like a two-dimensional two kind of feel to it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make it a three-dimensional feel. Okay. We have a question from Peter. He says, have you ever considered using leather with that technique? Yes, you can do it with leather, absolutely. I used to use a lot of leather a few years back. I worked with leather quite a bit, um, but you can definitely do it with leather as well. Absolutely. You know, sky's the limit, guys. Um, whatever you feel comfortable working with, or whatever you want to kind of push yourself to kind of to do, is um, you know, is basically it's it's your prerogative, and whatever kind of you know inspires you, I think that that's really really important. All right, so. Um, what we're going to do now is, welcome to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the studio right now, and I basically have, um, uh, you know, you know, C-stands set up and my, all my photographic stuff that I do in here. So I've got the C-stands, I've got like a, you know, paper backdrop. And as you can see, um, we have a mannequin here. Okay. So, um, when I'm kind of creating looks, um, I use full body mannequins because um, you really need to sort of understand what works from head to toe. Uh, before I started doing all this kind of work back in you know, I, you know back in the younger years, um, I didn't I didn't understand the concept that everything had to kind of like flow from you know from top to bottom, from bottom to top. So um, you know. As you get older, and as you start to you know learn things with it, with your craft and, and the profession and all that kind of stuff, um, I like to I like to do this. Especially I like to use them, especially when I'm going be doing shows, because what I do is I have six of these, <laughs> six or seven of these mannequins, and uh, I kind of line them all up, and I you know we, we dress them all. The whole team we kind of look at it, we dress them all, and we also put the headpieces on them and see what works and what doesn't work. Because sometimes it's a matter of maybe readjusting the piece itself, or the you know maybe kind of uh, slightly changing it, um, or we change the clothing. One of the two. Okay, so it's that kind of thing. Obviously, we can't do makeup on here, but um, I think that it's really important that 
Uh, for today especially, I wanted to kind of give you the overall kind of feel. I wanted to make you understand why it is important to, you know, have the, the complete look, the whole thing still from head to toe. So that's really, really important. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So yeah, I have uh, a lot of my girls here. They just hang out with me. You know, it's been uh, we've been quarantined for seven weeks now. It's like it's a little lonely. So, <laughs> so anyways, can you hit one second? Come a little closer. So what we have to do is this is just basically um, a piece of uh, elastic string. So because I want it to be centered, I want this to be centered. Um, we kind of, I kind of just, you know, use the middle of the nose, the bridge of the nose, and I, you know, I bring it right back. I bring that string right over the top into the back so that it kind of gives me uh, a perspective of the center, okay? As much as we possibly can. Obviously, you know, we're human. We're not perfect, but, you know, visually it looks aesthetically pleasing. So that's, that's the reason why that's there right now, okay? So we served, this has served our purpose, but I want to leave it there just to kind of make you understand all the little things you have to figure out. I mean, and you know, unfortunately I'm probably forgetting to say a lot of little things because you know, there's so much going on in my head right now. Um, but there's so many little things that you have to kind of understand to get from point A to point B, and that's the end result. There's so many little variables that you that you kind of, you, you've got to kind of discover. You know, the journey is the most important part. That is the amazing part is the journey because um, the realization uh, is how you learn. Right? That that's basically it. Okay. So guys, like I said, feel free to ask questions. All right. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take this little string off because it served its purpose. And guys, you can get these mannequins. I, I buy all my mannequins online. You can actually go to a mannequin store or, you know, just look them up on the internet. Um, these ones I actually bought in, uh, sorry, I bought them on Amazon. I bought them a few years back. Kim put it in the comments. Oh, she did? Kimberly, yeah. Oh, look at her. My wife, look at that. She's always, she's always looking out for me. James is also tuning in. He says hi. Hey, James. Okay, so what we've done now, so you can come in a little close. Um, I have, here's my two finished pieces. Okay, I have two of them. So we just showed you how to do the one piece. Obviously, you can do the same thing and make another piece. Uh, and this is going to be the back, this is going to be the front. I like this on the front because, uh, as you can see, it's a little more work, there's a little more detail there, and it looks a lot prettier, okay? So that's what's basically happening there. So I know I've already gone in and put hair tape up on top of here. I don't want to spare the, uh, the details, but there's a strand on one side of the center, and there's a strand of tape on the other side of the center. Okay, and that's just, this is how we're going to mount these on. So with hair tape, and I do a lot of this even when I'm do, when I'm doing shows. I'm using you know wigs and stuff like that. I always put hair tape underneath so it really sticks to the head because the last thing you want is her walking down the runway and all of a sudden she loses her wig. That would <laughs> not be good. All right, so I am going to put this on now. Once again, I've also gone in and put the tape on the pressure point, so where I need it to be. So I'm going to put this on on the top of the head because this is going to be the center. Okay, and this is the pressure points. Now you can see there's a little dot there that lets me know that that goes flat on the mannequin's right side. So if you're looking at her, it's the left side. Okay. So now I'm going to climb up on this thing here. Um, Alright, so this is the fun part. Because I'm going to do this with you guys. Because I did this roughly and loosely in my head when I, when I put these on. So I'm going to basically do this with you. I don't know if you can see up there. Do you want to come around the front maybe? Alright, so I'm going to have to, sorry guys, I don't need to get in the way here, but I'm going to have to come right in front. 
of my lovely model. I haven't given her a name. Maybe you need to step on something, don't you? No? You're okay? All right, so you can see. Okay? You can see that hair tape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to line this up. with that center piece right there. So I'm gonna stretch this foam. Poor Bryn's doing like exercise right now. She's, <laughs> she's got like go-go gadget arms right now. Okay, so I'm trying to line this up as evenly as I can. All right, so this is how it works, guys. You know, nothing is perfect, but you try to be as much as you possibly can, you know? Okay. All right, can you guys see that? I'm just gonna take this for a second. All right, so there we go. That's the center. I'm trying to keep it as straight as I possibly can. All right, here, love. I'm gonna give the camera back to Bryn. All right, so now I'm gonna come behind. Okay. Omar says hi, honey. Hey, nuts. <laughs> okay, now we'll just finish this piece back into here. Anna made a comment about the side you put as the hairline. She said those ridges mimic a hairline. In the Does front? It? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it will. It will definitely mimic the hairline. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so we got one piece on. So can you guys start to see something happen now? I hope. <laughs> yeah, amazing, they love it, it's brilliant. Okay, so, so you can see, right? You can start to see the shape take, start to take place already. Now, I'm not gonna worry about this just yet, okay? Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the other side on. All right. So same thing, guys. I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna take this off. Guys, I hope this isn't too repetitive or boring for you. Um, but unfortunately, when you're creating stuff and when you're, when you're building things, it does take time, you know? Things, you know, it's just, that's just the way it works. It can get a little monotonous, but you know what? I thought that just really showing you from beginning to end would be something refreshing with a very simple idea. Okay, so there you go, right? Can you see that? Okay, so we're trying to make that as straight as possible. All right. We're gonna keep working around the shape. So now you can, you can start to really understand and see why it's important to have your mannequin sort of dressed. Because what it really does is it really helps you visualize and complete the look. I think that that's really important when you're doing something that's creative. Oh, look at that. It actually even meets. That's amazing. You guys got me on a good day. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm not worried about this back here because I actually want this to be exposed. All right. But we're going we're gonna to see. We're going to check this out. Okay. So... Great, do you want to come back in the front here again? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can see it, right? Right, there you go. Okay, so that's, that's where we are right now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish fastening this and maybe we'll give it a little bit of a quirk. I think a little quirk would be really cool. All right, so now, this is the part where you play. Because you really want to kind of know what's going to work and what's not going to work. So I can just stick this flat onto the head and just make it look like it is what it is, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give it a little bit of a more of a three-dimensional shape. Okay? So once again, just kind of recapping and going back to where we started, you know, we just took just a simple idea, just a piece of foam paper. And so simple. 
all of a sudden you, you're just making it just a, a, a beautiful sort of, you know, piece of artwork, and as simple as that is. And I just want to show the simplicity in an idea and how it can be transformed into something really beautiful. Uh, at least I hope. I hope you guys feel the same way. Um, okay. So, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten this now. I'm going to just see what's going to work here and what is not going to work. So, I'm just going to have a little play. So now, you can see the back, right? Can you come over? So now I can just leave this flat, or I can maybe do something a little bit more interesting. I kind of like this little interesting thing here. I think it, it works well. What do you guys think? Same. Wow, brilliant. Right? Amazing. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that there. I'm going to just move this out of the way. If I had more arms, that would be great. So now I'm going to stick that little part right there nice and flat. Okay? So there we go. That's, that's the next step. Now we got one more step here on the side. I'm going to take this little piece off. I want to miss that little filament there. Okay? Let me just see how this is going to work. Just a bit here. Let's just see how that hair sticks out as well. I think that works well right there. So guys, thanks for doing this with me. We're actually creating a look all together, which I think is pretty cool. I've never done this before, so this is my first time doing it. So I'm learning as I'm going as well, guys. Okay, so there we go. So let's show, let's just show that side right. Okay. All right. Sorry. It's okay. Okay. So that gives it a little bit of a different feel, doesn't it? Just by changing that little shape back there, makes it look completely different. Makes it look a little bit more new, or just maybe not new, but just just interesting. Okay. So now, let's not show the front. Let's just come to the side here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just see here. Anna says, great shape. Thanks, Anna. It's always nice getting a compliment from Miss Pachito. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just see here. Just come around this way, huh? I'm just having a look, guys. I'm just kind of seeing what works, what doesn't work. You know, it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you, because it's just, you know, part of the fun. All right, let's just make this come down just a bit, so it kind of just lends them the back a little bit more. So I think we're going to stick it right there. Take this piece of tape off. Okay. Now, if you want to fill in the back, you totally can. But for just photographic purposes, I would only probably shoot, um, you know, uh, on the side or three quarter or front on. Okay, so that's what I would probably do with this. So I'm going to take this piece off the front now. Okay. All right, so Brynn, come around the front now. So guys, there she is. I don't have a name for her, okay? But what's really beautiful is kind of like, and you get that beautiful three-quarter feel, three-quarter shape to it. And you just, you've just, 
you've taken a really simple, simple idea. And now she looks, you know, I'm going to turn her sideways this way so that we can see her better. You know. There you go. That's that from the side. And then from the other side. Everyone's loving this. Oh, good. Yay. I'm glad. All right. And here's the other side. Okay, so now guys, we've, like I said, we've taken that one-dimensional flat piece of paper and we've transformed her into something, I think, very, very simplistic, but very, very beautiful. And now you guys understand by what I mean by like less is more, you know? Um, it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be, you know, something that you can see from space. But, you know, it's just got to be something that's just very in interesting. Um, so, you know, if you guys have any questions about this, please feel free to ask. Um, okay. Uh, is there any, any, any other questions before I move on? No, just okay, so praise. I lots and lots of praise. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, I'll be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> like I said, guys, when you do this kind of stuff, you never really know. You know, people kind of enjoy it if they like it. Um, but once again, so I'm just I'm just kind of going out of the picture right now. I'm just kind of just adjusting my models here. So I have a, a little, I guess if you want another little surprise for you. Um, just turn. Her. Crystal asked if you've ever used hot tools with this material. Um, I have. I tried a curling iron, or like you know a tong or whatever, um, and it doesn't respond very well. <laughs> it, kind of, it kind of melts. Mm -hmm. uh, Crystal wants to like set everything on fire. <laughs> All right, so guys, I have a, a little um, a little bonus thing. Um, so what I wanted to show once again was something simplistic, something that doesn't take too long to do. This is so unusual for me because usually when I'm creating stuff, it takes me it takes me weeks to, to create. But this was so refreshing that I could kind of just share this with you um, today. And I was just, I was so glad that I kind of remembered that I had that in the, in, the, in the cupboards. And it just worked out perfect that Davin just asked me to kind of do this with you today. So, phew. Okay, so let's keep an eye on her for a second. And one question before we move on. Peter's asking, would you mount this on a wig wrap or a tight pony? Um... Or I, or just on a bald head, or would I you? I like models that that have bald heads. I mean, I really do, but sometimes it's really hard to find them. So yes, you can you can find a way to um, you know really really maybe get a model with really short hair, and you can put like a little uh, like a hairnet or a little wig wrap or whatever you want. I think that, that that would work well, really well. All right, so guys, here's my um, second look. Now this look, before she shows you, is a little more intricate. Um, same idea, it's, it's still using the, you know, in and out weaving technique, it's still foam paper, but what I wanted to do was, make it even more like three-dimensional shape and just show you know how much how far you can push it now i hope when you guys are looking at this you, you've, you've got all these what i really wanted to do was just kind of like make you see things in a different way just inspire you it's like oh my god what about if you did that with this what about if you try this with that and that's basically what we do, you know, that, and that's hopefully what I, what we did today, that, it, you know, you just kind of makes you kind of look at something in a, in a completely different way, and, that, and I'm, hopefully that's what I'm, what I'm doing. But I love that. So, the next look, she's a pre-done, she's done, um, because it's a lot more intricate, it takes way too long to set this one up. Um, has, um, like I said, same idea, but it just has another kind of shape to it, and it's just a little bit more intricate. 
All right, so come on over. So if you want to come this way just a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Or maybe in the front, what do you think? We'll so, give it a 360. Okay, I like to cover everything up because, you know, you don't want to get dust on it and all that kind of stuff. So maybe kind of step back a little bit. So here's my second model. Um, and once again, it's the same sort of idea. It's the same weaving technique. It's a little bit more intricate. Okay, keep going around, huh? You can see it. Come up a bit so you can. All right, now you can see the back. Now this one is a complete look 360. Let me take it for a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one is a little bit more intricate, like I said. All right, so you really see those beautiful ridges. This is a little bit more difficult to do, but once again, I love this paper because it is malleable. Okay? So it's a beautiful, you know, piece of hair art, or, you know, foam art, whatever you want to call it, but what inspires me is hair. You know, hair really inspires me. Hair, you know, lets me see things in a completely different light as well. Um, so, I hope, you, I hope you like this one too. I hope. <laughs> so, here we are, all right? Um, This one has a little bit of a different shape. This one is obviously uh, weaved all the way to the ends and then I cut it and, you know, I kind of fasten it on the head and you don't really know what it's going to look like until you actually do it. Um, and that's when you start to get maybe ideas of how you're going to assemble it, um, you know, what the end, res end result is, is going to be. I don't always have a preconceived idea of what it's going to look like because I really like things to sort of happen organically. I like the element of surprise. I really like the element of surprise. Because sometimes if you're going to make something and you know exactly what it's going to look like, that's kind of disappointing in a way. Because I really like to have that, you know, aha moment, you know, that aha kind of, you know, kind of feeling. So, actually, you know what, hon? Do me a favor. Can you just push them closer together just a little bit more? At the angle they're at? Yeah. Hang on, guys. Just bear with me for a second. Okay, cool. All right, here they are. Here's my... Sorry, I know I... Guys, I know I'm moving the camera around too much. You guys are probably getting sick. So, there we are. Okay? So, I don't know how long we've been going for. How long have we been on for? Can anybody tell me? <laughs> Let me see. Uh, anyways, that doesn't matter. But, so anyways, guys, I hope that you enjoyed today. I hope that, um, you know, you know, I inspired you somehow or some way or, um, you know, Make, make you kind of see things a little bit, an hour and 10 minutes, thank you. Um, so, so yeah. I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed this. Um, I know I did. I'm gonna just spin myself around now. So I'm gonna give this back to Bryn. I'm just gonna... Um, I had fun doing it. Uh, I was, you know, guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I said, this is my first one. So, you know, I was, you know, talking to other people that have done this before. You know, Anna and James and my brother and everybody. Um, and yeah, it was a little kind of nerve wracking a little bit in the, in the beginning because it's, I don't know, it's just kind of weird. But um, I, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this morning or this, wherever you are in the world. So, guys, if you have any other questions, um, just maybe leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them later on. And uh, before I go, I want to say, Thank you to, you know, Davenous Education for giving me the opportunity to do this. And thank Ina, I want to thank Dax, and the whole crew and the whole team everywhere around the world. Thank you so much. And I especially want to thank 
you guys, the viewers, and the whole sort of you know global family of of Davinus, uh, for tuning in and letting me, um, giving me some time to, and letting me in your living room. So, anyways, guys, thank you so much. Um, I don't really know. I don't really have anything else to say. So. Thank you. And uh, guys, take care of yourselves. Be well, stay safe, um, healthy, and happy.